Welcome to the threat management staff meeting. Since I've got the first item in the agenda, I'll go ahead and get started. Up until this week, we have been sharing accomplishments in the, <laughs> we have had the intention of sharing accomplishments in the weekly group calls, which hasn't always happened. Uh, that's on me. We're working on automating that, but we are also in an attempt to better share information and put things in one place. We're going to start to put all of the weekly accomplishments or the bi-weekly accomplishments now in this agenda. So this list is from container security and threat insights and any other group we take on in the future. I know that the secure team does this and they pare it down to features and bugs, which we may consider doing if this list gets too big. So thoughts on that. But good job. Nice work. Yep. Lots of great stuff done. I think this is a better way to present it to all in one rather than the separate meetings. But uh, yeah, good stuff. And then I have a couple of other items in the agenda. So unless if anyone has anything they want to call out around accomplishments or thoughts on this change of plan and how to share them, I'll move on. Okay. Uh, we've finalized our OKRs. I just want to make sure we don't talk about them a lot, but when we get to the beginning of the quarter, I want to make sure we point them out to everybody. So, you know, I want to encourage you to look at the OKRs and ask questions in line in the comments. There's some new ones and some very familiar ones in there. So we'll just leave it at that. And then a reminder that our employee gate engagement survey is kicking off this week. You probably received an email yesterday on that and it'll only take about five minutes. So don't forget. Does somebody want to verbalize Tiago's update? I can do it since I mentioned somewhere uh, there. So uh, we have two backend engineers uh, that we are, uh, that actually there, we have offers for two backend engineers. Uh, we keep the, those names confidential until those offers are accepted. I will move to uh, on 13th of, of uh, December to container security, but I'll still with you like helping whenever there will be a need for that uh, in Threat Insights. And, and the next candidate, like, okay, I'll start with, with the one candidate and there'll be another candidate that, that should start on in the middle of March. So it's really far off, but it looks like he has really great Kubernetes knowledge. So it will help us build a uh, better product uh, easier and, the, <laughs> and in the shorter term. So that's it. Thanks, Alan. And this is gonna be a quick meeting. Our last agenda it's, item. Uh, it's, fun, it's fun to be interviewing again. It was uh, overwhelming uh, for a while just with the number of interviews we were doing about you know nine plus months ago, but uh, it's fun to do it again. And I'm glad it's not three or three a day, which is what it felt like for a while. Uh, it's just hard to be fully engaged with three a day, but uh, good stuff. And we do have an OKR around putting together sort of a team building, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous or a combination of both. And I think we should wait until January once at least one of the new hires is on board. So uh, I'll be getting your input on thoughts on that closer to the beginning of 2021. Last agenda item is a call for agenda items. If you have ever attended the secure stage meeting, most of the agenda is contributed to by the engineers on the team. This shouldn't be a time for just Tiago, Wayne and myself to share stuff with you because we have other, other means of doing that. So I want to encourage you to use this space as a place to share, you know, something you've learned recently, something that you think would be helpful to the whole group, an idea you had. Um, just putting that out there. I know we have a lot of places to do that given our Slack channels, but um, we wanna make this a useful time for everybody. Wayne. Yeah, that's a good point. On that note, does anybody have anything they'd like to discuss with the group or something they're really happy about or concerned about, et cetera? I just, I just have a question cool that's happened recently? I just have a question for Lindsay on that. Uh, we. Uh, on my side, we have the container security weekly meeting. And then uh, um, sometimes it's hard to know what I would share over there and what I would share over here. Would you have a couple of examples on yeah. um, how to create this uh, heuristic? 
That's a great question. And I think the same thing applies to, you know, what do I share in the container security Slack channel versus the threat management Slack channel? And my answer to that, and I'll let everyone else chime in with their thoughts, is that if it's specific to something you're working on in container security, an issue, something that, you know, is a requirement from Sam or a design from Kyle, that should be in your weekly container security meeting or in the container security Slack channel. Something about the team, you know, maybe a process improvement that you're thinking about or something that you learn about like GitLab as a whole that might help everybody uh, be more efficient and you know how they're iterating on their MRs or an educational opportunity. Maybe you, you're getting a new certification and you think it'd be something that other people would be interested. I'd say that would belong more in the threat management because it's not specific to container security. and Everybody can benefit from it. Thank you very much. So, good stuff. Um, so I just said there were some recent Slack messages in SD threat management. Uh, I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, it was only a day ago, roughly. So any volunteers to look at and organize something for our sub department on a holiday session? You know, uh, a year ago, uh, I think we had four people on the team. Maybe, maybe four or five permanent members, so not that many. Um, so, or people were really, really new, didn't make sense to do this. I didn't actually even know this existed. I'm glad it does. Anybody want to volunteer whose name is not Lindsay, uh, who you tend to do these, which is great, but anybody else want to volunteer on uh, potentially figuring out something for the team? We can repeat this question for the broader audience because there are folks that aren't on the call today too. Yep. All right. If so, you know, co may comment here, comment in uh, the Slack message, which I didn't link. I linked something else. So, um, also just a, a heads up. So I find, and to as does Lindsay and Tiago, interesting things in other Slack channels and meetings. Just to let the group know about it. So I posted this one too. Is that Stan uh, is working on retiring almost 13,000 13, deprecation warnings um, from the Ruby two point seven upgrade, uh, and he's. Uh, looking for help to, uh, to help with a couple of them. And there's an issue there. And um, Dong also put in um, a Slack channel. So if anybody's in, don't have to be interested. If anybody's interested, uh, you know, take a look. Thanks and nodding, so cool. Um, the, uh, uh, so you, of course, don't have to. Just, they're looking for volunteers. They really mean volunteers. So if you're interested, look. If you're not interested, feel free to ignore. Um, Anything else in our um, Slack channel that we haven't discussed that maybe doing so synchronous would be a useful thing to do? Um, we're doing a book club on who moved my cheese, which is about uh, change. There's, there's, if you're interested in doing, I, I've only done my first book club at Git um, recently, uh, so uh, it's kind of a neat way to talk about a book. Really interested. So if you're interested, take a look at that. Uh, just scrolling past a little more. Um, I think those are the only kind of FYI on certain things. So oh, somebody else started a book club on Ruby under the microscope. So uh, going back a bit. So if you see that in threat management, uh, SD, <coughs> SD threat management, take a look if you're interested. Um, so on that note, I saw somebody use breakout rooms in Zoom. Has anybody done a breakout room in Zoom before? Lindsay's nodding, a lot of people saying no. So it's just- it part of the company meeting, like the, the GitLab team meetings, they would break out in the little chat sessions. Yep, 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 that's it. So um, anybody, uh, folks okay with humoring me as we try it here and maybe break up into groups, maybe for just two minutes to talk about the, you know, two groups. Each two people talk about the Q4 OKRs and what they like about them and what they don't. I'm seeing one thumbs up. Any other? All right, let me see if I can figure this out. Uh, breakout rooms. Assign participants to two This rooms. is an educational opportunity for Wayne more than anything. Yeah, and I'd like feedback on the OKRs too. Let's see here. Uh, assign there. And while he's figuring that out, you guys, just a reminder that Friends and Family Day is next Wednesday and there's a U.S. holiday following that. So Thanksgiving and a lot of people end up taking Thanksgiving in the following day. Folks like me are taking the entire week. So keep in mind that it's going to be a real quiet week next week. Yeah, I'll be out next week too. 
it's hard to work with the kids running around. <laughs> And just also to encourage people to take your local holidays. You know, I've had people ask me before, like it's sort of a, you know, it's this holiday in my country, should I take it off? Yes, the answer is yes, always. All right, so the goal here is you're gonna be shoved into a breakout room and then um, take a look at that Q4 OKRs, just discuss it amongst the, the two of you and then um, we'll be back in two minutes and discuss as a group. So I'm gonna click on that. And so it automatically should put you in that group and it'll automatically bring you back two minutes later. So let's give it a try. Hey. All right. So who knows if this is going to work, but. Tell some... you like that you're going into breakout group number two or three or something like that. Yeah, people got messages. I didn't. I didn't put you in one since you and oh, I okay. together created the. But we can still talk about it. So uh, taking a step back on the OKRs, um, what? Uh, what do you like? Good what idea, you by the way. I like the breakout room idea. Staff meetings. Cool. As Zoom is telling my internet connection is unstable. So I guess the main thing that I have to talk to you about OKRs is that I still have one in that draft mode and I'm, you know, we, I haven't replied back to your comment on the LCP. I was looking at the spreadsheet for that recently and the pages that don't have a green rating of ours are only getting that because they're getting a 404 response, which is interesting. Hmm. So we might be in much better shape, which would make me more confident to commit to that other OKR um, given that. So I, I didn't want to push the whole thing if we could do something on it this quarter. Something yeah, or maybe like one and more a week. little bit, but re, but but not move it out completely since it's it's a overall company important thing. Sure, maybe taking like any pages that are taking longer than three seconds to load instead sure. of two and a half. And it's not all of them, a subset of them. But I think previously we said all. We don't have that many pages. <laughs> So, okay, so, yeah, and I, th I think that's a reasonable way to go. But if we need to push the whole thing, I'm good with that too. That was just a thought. The other OKR thought I had is that given our our goal of three MRs uh, a month now for managers with the holidays, that's going to be a little harder. We may have wanted to stick with two until next quarter and been more ambitious when we weren't going to be taking, you know, one or, you know, a, a week off for d November and December. So just putting that out there is it might be a little risky with the three MRs. All right. I think everybody's back now. All right. So first, how did that work? Other than I think it's annoying when you get cut off when you're in the middle of a conversation since there's a there's a fixed time frame. A useful tech a useful thing to do. Um I'm sure yeah, I mean uh I I think it can I think it's definitely got some uses um for sure. Uh that one was pretty short. Um, <laughs> <is your> line. <laughs> good point. Okay. So it's too short, but, but overall, maybe a technique we use, uh, I mean, it, it, it does seem like it has its, uh, de definite uses. Um, cool. Thanks Jonathan. Well, uh, see me how Zamir laughing and me how, uh, nodding. Yeah. It's like, I just get thrown to a different room and I have to repeat my zoom. Zoom procedure to turn up the volume to hear someone else and just start talking about OKRs. So that note, in the extremely short 120 seconds, uh, somebody, uh, somebody want to volunteer from uh, each uh, breakout room to say, you know, what what your initial impressions were in that very short period of time? Uh, I can talk about mine. Um, we were talking about OKRs in general. We didn't. Uh, went through each of them. Um, but basically, we were discussing the difference between how things are in threat inside in terms of OKRs and uh, container security. So that's, uh, it's, uh, it's a slightly different dynamic. Cool. That's it for now. Yeah, could you elaborate on that? Because the way I look at OKRs, they should be at the team level and not specific mm -hmm. to the group. So I'm curious mm -hmm. what examples are of how it would be different between the two. Yeah, I can mention a couple examples. Uh, sometimes in container security, we have to explore third party solutions. And that means, for example, that the MR rate is going down a lot, right? In comparison, like if we had like a solid feature that users are using 
and then you start having like bugs and things like this, then the MI rate can go up a little bit more. That okay. was the, in two minutes, that was, that was what we went through. It also kind of depends what we're dealing with. Like this cycle, I barely did get three merge requests done. And the third one is basically me trying to migrate 5 million rows in our database, which is getting significant pushback, pushback from the maintainers and inconsistent feedback from them as well. So this is like me trying to put together a puzzle, but I'm missing three or four pieces. And I know um, other people that have had that same experience where it's, you know, for one milestone, they've only gotten a couple of MRs merged because <clears throat> they're focused on something really complicated. And I think that's why we make rem the reminder that it's a team goal and that it's an average of the whole team. And if everyone on the team, which is what Zamir just described, is focused on these like long investigative tasks, then, you know, the, the whole average is lower. So that all makes sense. Thanks for explaining. It would be awesome if there was a way to like, take into account complexity of MRs in the rate rather than just like, every, because every MR is not rated the same. Every MR is not the same. So you get something from like from Mihao that would, that just is very time consuming um, and high, high complex tasks that you can't break up. Um, and I mean, you could balance that out with like the rest of us doing as small as M, like, you know, some tiny MRs, but there's going to be two or three that might be more time consuming. So I don't know if there's a metric way to, to, uh, to influence the metric with like a weighting. Yeah, because the weight is supposed to be a measure of complexity. So if you were to take right. that into consideration, then it's an interesting suggestion. Would you, would, would you mind adding that to the retrospective? As yeah, a I think that would be a, an interesting topic to discuss there. Yeah, I can do that. Just to finalize the logic that I was thinking of, uh, not that I was cut off, it's just that came in later. Uh, and when I see, for example, the MR uh, rate, and I know that I'm not contributing much because I'm doing other, you just feel bad because you're pushing the rate down, right? Uh, it's just, that's why I was mentioning the difference between the two teams. It's, uh, I, but I don't have a solution on how to improve on that. So then it's just something to think about. They were really, it's, it's about the team and the average overall and average over time, not per person, but I, I definitely get where you're coming from. Hey, on, on terms, you might see terms in the handbook and other places, narrow MR rate. So narrow, it means that that's the, the, the metric we track. It hasn't changed. It's just the terminology changed, which MRs done by us in any part of the product or documentation, not the handbook, but product or documentation, um, by our team. So it does not include uh, community co contributions, uh, which is important too. That's the broad MR rate. Uh, it, but, you know, let's say, uh, you know, um, no, Alan, you, you do a change to a different part of the product that's not Thread Insights or Container. Um, that counts on our team MR rate. Let's say somebody else, in a, another team member, makes a change to, uh, you know, the vulnerability dashboards. Um, somebody on the secure in the secure department or some other department that doesn't count in our narrow MR rate. So that's just how uh, what the term narrow MR rate means. It's only I think we've only started using it in the last four or six weeks. What other um, so from the other group? I, we, I think we may have covered most people, but from the other breakout group, any impressions on the MRs or thoughts on the MRs? That yeah, was well, from the other breakout group, so I don't know if you want to count <laughs> what I was saying in there. But. That I don't think that we had much different is mostly about the MR rate. Yeah, yeah. We need to the one thing that is important in terms of MR rate. It's it's not just metrics. It's just something that will should force us to think iteratively, like think in small changes because these are easier to merge and and all of that. And, and I get that it's like the the biggest problem of the whole like container like com computer science is how to measure uh, effectiveness of our work, and it's really it's really hard to measure that. Because sometimes you're just taking a shower and just thinking about that, that doesn't count to your MR rate, right? But at the same time, uh, when you're doing small changes, these are easy to be like either reverted, but first of all, it's easy to be reviewed. So for for me, I'm, I, I like that, that we're trying hard and that we think as a team how to make sure that we deliver uh, like lots of MRs uh, that, and contributing to the, to the product. So, so that's, that's a good thing. But I've been trying to take good notes on what, what people have been saying. Um, so please uh, 
take your own notes when you, when you say things or before you say them or just correct whether people have written what you said. So I may have gotten what people said really in, inaccurately. And if I did, I apologize. So, but please correct for folks who couldn't make the meeting today, but still review the notes. So. And I want to add a thought, you know, I don't know what the back end equivalent of this is, but for the front end, we've got these small pajamas migration issues that you can pick up. You know, no one wants to be stuck on the same time consuming, challenging, exhausting investigation for months on end. So, you know, no one, and we also don't want to punish anyone for putting hard work into those things. So I encourage you, I don't, and again, I don't know what the, the back end equivalent of this is, but to find that source of something that would both expose you to other parts of the product, um, but also help pick up that MR rate during periods, it's that MR rate and your, your motivation rate during periods of time where you're deep in some investigation. Yeah, for, for us, that would be probably errors in sentry. So whenever there is some, like these are usually one-liners that there is some kind of exception that was not captured by us. So, so that's one thing that we could do, uh, look through sentry and we're doing that on a weekly basis. We're looking at the things that are there and and just resolving the issues the other thing is one thing that, that Wayne mentioned about like fixing warnings for ruby 2.7 so that that could also improve well, those small changes are really really good thing because they're easy they're very easy to be merged at the same time you just feel happy that you did something and you contributed yeah um the pajama changes are bigger than I think probably the, those Ruby warnings, but they're in the same class. I think of relatively small and you know when waiting on a on a on a you know a pipeline to run, or waiting on a person to get back to you, or you know or multiple of those things in flight, or waiting on you know your coffee machine to heat up. Uh, some of those might be you know a ten or you know sixty minute change. Um, it might be good things to look at because also. Get, I sure love when something I've mer something I've worked on gets merged, and it's just kind of um, I'm sure many are like that. So even if it's a small little thing, like I made a typo change yesterday to a handbook page, just a word was spelled wrong. This kind of neat. I still feel good about it when I saw it get merged, or um, and uh, it gives that combination of these much bigger things that take a lot longer, um, like investigational. Uh, like investigating new th new software to incorporate, or you know, Matt, like uh, Michal mentioned, you know, five million. I think it was five million rows need to be migrated, and a lot of feedback on that in MR um, to uh, you know to quote normal size things or average size things to really small things on, on the small side of the average, but still important. So some some to think about. The other thing is, um, I think it's been a very interactive session, maybe one of the most interactive we've had. So I think we should consider other breakout rooms in the future. And um, just on a subject, make it to Jonathan's point, more than two minutes, apologies. Um, and um, then, uh, you know, then come back to the group and report back. H how long should one be? Five, five minutes? Five, that, and that would also work whenever someone new is joining us. So we can, like during the onboarding, we could have a call and we could have like five minute session with each of us. And then we could have like other five minutes uh, breakout uh, calls with others so we can, you know, just like, like it happened during the uh, it was summit or I don't remember uh, the name of our, uh, yeah, that was summit, right? It sounds like so, the idea of someone new coming in and then like going from room to room with a different member of the team, it reminds me of that concept of speed dating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Speed onboarding. We are, we are on time. All right, we'll see some of you. Cheers. Thank you.